Welcome everyone to the Inspired Choices TV show. I am Christine McIver, your host today, where we have another inspiring guest who's going to be sharing with us how he is creating greater in the world. If you are someone who is looking to get your message out to the world and you believe you would be a great match for this show, please get in contact with me, Christine at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. So our guest today, I have a great story of how we met. I don't think he even realizes. Uh -oh. <laughs> so our guest today is Jeffrey Straker. Welcome, Jeffrey. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks hey, for I'm yeah. so glad you made it. Yeah. So Jeffrey is a singer, songwriter, pianist, funny, all-around Canadian dude who's traveling the world. I want to use that as my new intro. <laughs> Funny all around Canadian dude. You are. Yeah. Okay. You do. You travel the world, mainly across Canada, yep. where you're where you're performing mm -hmm. and you're online and you're doing all sorts of things. But you've also gone uh, to Peru. Where else have you gone? To? Um, with my I, I, a fair bit into Latin America. It started with a with a festival in Chile, but then that took me to Peru and Mexico. Um, I've gone a little bit into the into the U.S. and soon Australia. Like it, it's interesting how when you start throwing it out there, how it right, happens, right? Right. Yeah. Very very cool. So Jeffrey and I met. So one one night, I don't think you realize this story. <laughs> this is so fun. So one night, my uh, sister in law said, "Hey, do you want to come to a backyard concert with me?" And I'm like. What? What's a backyard concert? Like, yeah. I had no idea what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up where we all grabbed whatever and we played around the table. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay. So she starts driving and she's driving and she's driving. And I grew up in this little village, Four Corners Don't Blink. Nobody knows where this place is. It's right. called Kinkora. Yes. And she's driving, 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 and she's going towards Kinkora. She's like a, a mile and a half from Kinkora and she turns into this house. And I'm like, what are we doing here? So this was the one house on the road that they didn't go to our school, but they had a great big dog, and this dog would chase me when I was on my bike. And I would come up to the cornfield, and all of a sudden I would have to book it past oh. this place so this dog wouldn't get me. And I walk in, and there you are. And it was that show. It was that show. That's crazy. In King Cora. Yeah. And and we met there, and yeah. I was like, I was in the front row, I was laughing. I knew all these people that I grew up with, and they were like, where has she been? Because I had moved a long time. Yeah. I'm having more fun than anybody there. And I was like, I need to I need to have this man at my backyard and we need to have fun. And we've done that and we twice. Did. Yeah. Twice now. And uh, had so much fun and I thought when I started the TV show, I'm like, Jeffrey. Jeffrey yeah. needs to come. I, thought, I, I didn't know the first bit though. I mean I I remember, you know, because and honestly I've done so many House concerts and concerts, but at this point, I'm, it started to get a bit blurry because there's so many. But I, and I remember, I remember the house concerts at your place, but I didn't remember that first one. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah okay. So what was really interesting to me as as I was at that concert and I'm watching you, extremely talented. Thank you. And I'm like, what what brought you to this? What what brought you to doing what you're doing? And mm -hmm. one of my favorite things, and I've said this to you, one of my favorite things that you do. Honestly, I love your music, but your storytelling is brilliant. Okay. And I know that your writing of your, you know, your songwriting is all stories that you have experienced in your life. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever at a concert with Jeffrey, he actually tells the story before he plays the song. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of a thing that I like to do, yeah. And I, and I found, no matter where I go, in Canada or wherever, that... People do like the stories, even strangely, in situations where people maybe don't speak English as well. They quite enjoy a story. Like it's, it's a fascinating insight into people. I think yeah. songs are, are generally stories of some sort, but people like the right. other the story too. The behind insight, right? Yeah, the behind the insight. Yeah. So, what? Tell us about you. Tell us about where you grew up and, oh. and how you came to be the man you are today. Well, so I mean, I grew up in a small town in Saskatchewan, a small farming town um, on a farm beside the town, actually, and. Um, Luckily, we had a piano teacher in, in, in the town. So even though I was in rural Saskatchewan, you know, there was, an, there was a, a chance to have an arts education through this lady, we'll call her Mrs. Young, because that was her name. And uh, <laughs> Mrs. Young was great. She, she kind of taught everything. She'd teach anything. Like, she could, if you, want, if you were like, I want to learn the bassoon, she'd figure it out. You know, but, but she was an opera singer and a, and a classical piano. She was very good. Wow. And so, she, uh, yeah, she, she gave me my first lessons, and I went quite with it as far as I could with her and I loved to practice from the get-go so I was a I was a piano nerd in a way you know I liked like the piano and then by the time I got to my my teenage years she handed me off to the, this lady in the next town and I did a few more grades and ultimately when I was in grade 10 in school I started going in driving into the the conservatory at the University of Regina to study with a professor 
for three years to do like the higher levels. Right. And that was the that was the there was an important juncture there because in your teenage years, like in small town Saskatchewan, in, particularly in the winter, which is like ten months of the year, you're a uh, <laughs> You're uh, not the weather conversation. I know. <laughs> Please. I know. But uh but you but but hockey's the thing, right? Like yes. a young guy should be playing hockey and he should be good at it. And I was just like, I just want to play the piano, you know? So it's a bit odd. And I mean, I I probably made a bigger deal of it than anybody else did. Like I was like, Oh, I'm not gonna fit in, I'm not you know, I'm not playing hockey. Right. But um ultimately I knew what I loved. And I did that. I mean I, I had to keep a bit of athleticism in my life, so I took up curling. <laughs> I know. Don't laugh. There's probably curlers watching. I, like, we no, we I, curlers are hardcore. It's actually, I've never done this. At the time, at the time, people in the curling rings were like drinking Ryan Coke on the ice and smoking cigarettes, so it wasn't that athletic. <laughs> anyway, but but so I really dove more and more into the piano. But then, I mean, I'll fast forward this this a bit. I went to university. I kicked music to the side. I did a science degree. Um, went off, did part of the de- the degree in Ireland, and and really. Um, like took a whole bunch of other subjects there, like Irish politics and history and literature, and it was everything but music. But all the while, I had this sort of hankering. It's like you know, you're I was, in Ireland and you're not engrossed in the music. Well, I, I was experiencing it, not playing it. You oh, know, like okay, I was, like, okay. I was soaking up all of it and loving it and thinking, you know, oh, you know, since I've, I've studied music my whole life, you know, I kind of want to be making music. And when I came back to Canada, finished my degree, got a job in Toronto, and came out here. Um, and I worked in marketing for a while, like in a, in, a, in a big marketing company. And I started dabbling in music at night in the singer-songwriter scene. I discovered the singer-songwriter scene in the GTA. And it was pretty cool. So I was like, oh, these people are, who generally, I'll be quite frank, are mediocre musicians, but are really great wordsmiths. And I think most of them would agree with that. Like, generally, singer-songwriters aren't ninja piano players or guitar players. That's right. not what you need to be. You need to have a great way with words. And I was really, I was really enamored with that. Right. It's very magical, right? So I started to string some words together and sing some songs. And long story short, gradually you start noticing people listening to what you're saying. It's not, it's not like, you know, Bieber. It's, it's, it's not like, like, oh my God, and then a million people were at the club. Like, you know, it, <laughs> and then. It's not that. It's not that at all. But I, got, I did get to the point, though, where I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure I want to do this full time, which, which is what I'm doing now. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I want to do this full time. But I've got this job that I'm in that has a regular paycheck. A regular and, paycheck. And dental benefits. And, you know, a pension. Like all these, these things, right? Right. The things that <clears throat> hook us. Things that hook us. And the things that you're told from a very young age that you should strive for. Absolutely. Right? So, so I, was, I was in this mindset of like, I should be striving for that. And I was. And, and it was, I, I didn't not like what I was doing. I quite right. liked it. But I knew my passion was music. So tell me. You're, I, I just want to go back. Yeah. So you you just naturally were gravitating towards music as a young man. Yeah. Just naturally. Yeah. And then you're in Ireland. Okay, so if you don't know, I'm. my ancestors are Irish. Mm-hmm. And I've been in Ireland. And the music, it just, it, yeah, you know, it's I, grew up, I grew yeah. up listening to that yeah. and it would pull me in. Yeah. You're in Ireland and this very natural thing of you and you're not playing and yet you're engrossed with it mm-hmm. it's all around you all of the yeah, time yeah 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 you come home with did you feel at any point like something was dying inside of you you know it it's funny like it 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 was it could have been that but it wasn't like i could um but, but there, there's it's it, it would be parallel to that so it, it wouldn't feel like someone was dying inside me but like i became this active uh, observer but knew I wanted to be a participant right like it, it was so like and and I knew that wasn't the place where I should be so like I was enjoying it because I love the music like and the Celtic music right. I quite love I, I grew up the place where I grew up in Saskatchewan there were a lot of old-time musicians who played you know the Western Canada version of that Celtic stuff right. basically so fiddles and mandolins yes. and all that right so when I was in Ireland I mean I was very aware that like I was loving this so much and I wanted to like like get up from the tables and dance. Like I wanted to do something. Yes. You know, and it sounds a bit silly, but like you really do want to get up and dance. Like that music is so crazy. <laughs> um and then I and I came back to Canada and I, I did start taking some fiddle lessons and I and I and I was really I was really sort of enthralled with the whole thing. Um 
But so it was, but but like, but I wasn't participating. I was observing, and I was I was enjoying observing. Right. And I was like, but I want to be a participant. You know, it was right. it was it was weird. Right. I was kind of on the sidelines. Right. You know. Yeah. So it, it's funny because you know a lot of us start down a path. I mean, I was in human resources for twenty years. Mm-hmm. Right? I was going to go into accounting, right? right? And today I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that Can that's that's where I was going, I know, right? I know. Um, me and accounting, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can do it, yeah, but it's not, exactly. you know, and, you and I'm competent at yeah, it, yeah. but it's not the thing that has my heart sing. No, give right? you a calculator, you can <laughs> work that thing like no work. one's business, hey. exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly, but the, it's this thing where we, it's like we have to keep choosing yes. and choosing and choosing yeah. and, and, and eventually we choose into what really, really speaks to us yeah. very, very clearly. Yeah. And this is where you... This is the path that you were taking. Yeah. So, so here you are now. You have several albums out. I don't even know how many albums. Seven. Seven albums. Yeah, yeah. Amazing songs. I play your music all the time. Oh, I happen thanks. to know some of them off by heart. Thanks, thanks. And um, you're you're traveling. You're really making your mark. But I I'm curious. Who are the people that are coming up to you and telling you stories about how you've impacted? their lives this it's really it's really interesting i mean there's one there's one there's one thing i want to just i want to skip back to that i forgot to say okay. about about the, the 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 transition to here and it was there was there was and then, and then i'll definitely I'll, I'll i'll talk to that um but there was a, an incident i had because i, I had to make this leap right i had to make yes, the leap right. Sorry. um and i had this moment that, that i've wrote, that i've written a song about that i i think like i'm not i'm not like cuckoo religious but I would call it like this moment was like a sign or a blessing or something like I don't know what it was but I visited a great aunt of mine in an old folks home and she had and she had Alzheimer's and I didn't I knew she had Alzheimer's I knew I was going to visit this great aunt with Alzheimer's I didn't know what that was going to be but I was going with my grandma and my mom and and we went and visited Aunt Mary and that day in an old folks home in Toronto and she didn't like so my grandma was Mary's sister yes and what was was very apparent like when they so you know, sort of encountered each other in the home, is that Mary no longer knew her own sister. Right. Like you could see the the, the 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 look on her face was like there was nothing. Right. Um, and I was like, it just hit me like a brick wall. I was like, holy smokes, she didn't choose that. That that would be her where where this path was going. Right. And and we all we all have the ability to choose aspects of our path, but there's things that are beyond our control, right? And and I mean, <clears throat> the reality is, uh, what hit me that day is like that might be me. It might not be me. But if it might be me, or where, wherever it is that this path is going, like if it might, it, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna sort of come to a hard stop at some point. So what I realized that day is like, why wouldn't I want to try to enjoy every day as much as possible, en route to wherever it is that it's heading, right. versus sitting around thinking, right. coulda, woulda, shoulda. Like I don't want right. to be, I did not want to be the coulda, woulda, shoulda guy. Right. And so, so I walked out of the the home that day, and and. Called my boss and quit my job. Like it was, it was this really, like, yeah, it was like this crazy moment. Wow, thank right? you, Aunt Mary. Yeah, and I mean, and I, I, I like almost, seriously, Aunt Mary. I know, and I almost <laughs> didn't go to the visit that day, and I, and I think if I hadn't yeah. gone, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have done the switcheroo, and I'd still be doing. Well, you may you know, have, but you know, yeah, right. I don't know. You I don't, don't know. You don't know. Right? You don't know. Anyway, so you, you don't know what you don't know. So anyway, right. so I wanted to just just mention that because. That's- that's amazing. It was a crazy moment, right? But but fast forwarding to to, to what Wait, you were talking about. Thank you for not missing that moment. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you could have just brushed it aside. Yeah. Right? You yeah. could have said, Oh, you know, I'm just being emotional or whatever. Because a lot of us do. I was yeah. I was interviewing a woman last night on the radio and she said, We have a hundred gifts a day that come in front of us. We don't really, really see it. A oh. hundred gifts a day that the universe actually presents to us. That's pretty neat. Right? And pretty I went, A hundred. Oh my God, that's yeah. amazing! Yeah. What a gift that was to you that yeah. day. Yeah, it was huge. And what a gift you are now to the world. Oh, thanks. You are. I mean, you're an amazing musician, and your stories—they—they they really do touch me. I was telling you earlier that you know, "Flatline" is one of my favorite songs, and it's because, first of all, it's a Canadian story, you know, mm-hmm. and about Tim Hortons in it. And <laughs> <laughs> there's Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, in it. And, but it's also about a real. A real journey that someone's on mm-hmm. and you're when you tell those stories you send messages to us I, I hope so I mean it, it's certainly not I, I don't it's I'm not that's not in my head consciously at the moment but I think if I if I sit back and think of what it is that I'm doing like I, I do hope so right yeah like on a level you do um, but and that 
that totally links to what you were asking about, like what kind of people are right. coming up to me or whatever. It's it's a really fascinating thing. Like on the way to see you here today, I had this recollection of recently, within the last few months, I'm trying to remember where the heck I was because I do so many of these shows, but a guy came up to me at the end of a show and <clears throat> he'd, he'd, he was retired, like s- had a serious job. Like like it was he was like... I want to say like a superior judge, just like a superior court justice. I don't know, like it's some big judge. And he said, he said, after the show, he said, I can't believe I didn't pursue music. Oh. And I was like, what? And, and I said, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, I said, like, what are you talking about? And he, and he said, he said, look, I, I pursued my life in the courts. And, uh, you know, I, ultimately I became a judge. But he said, in the bottom of my gut, I just wanted to be a musician. Oh. And he said, watching you do this, I realized I should have. And I was like, oh, you know, like... But it's never too late. But it's never too late. So I said, I said, look, like you could do it now. And he, he was kind of like, he's like, yeah, it's not the same. I could. Um, so that, that that was one instance, and that that really stuck stuck with me. Right. Um, but I've had, like, I have I have a song. Um, it's a very story sort of folky song called "The Wonderful Mrs. Bell" about yes. about an East Indian lady who was living in the small town on the prairies where I grew yeah. up, and there were no other East Indian people, and she really was one of a kind, and and as a result, different, and as a result lonely because no one really talked a lot to her but I sing that song it shows specifically about this East Indian lady on the prairies and I'll be at the merch line or the merch table after the show or something and there'll be like this middle aged white straight dude because that's mean he's like I am Mrs. Bell and, you're, and, you, and you don't wow. you don't expect that like, you, you're, like that's not why I wrote that song I wrote that song to tell a story about Mrs. Bell and yes. then but this guy out there who is like the farthest thing from Mrs. Bell, like, you know, yes. not an, a, a lonely uh, lady of East Indian descent in a small Saskatchewan right. Prairie town. Like, it's like some, some white guy in Mississauga, right? Right. And he's like, I'm Mrs. Bell. Yeah. And, and then you realize there's kind of Mrs. Bells everywhere. Right. And that's what you kind of realize. So um, I find people via a song, like through the through the, um, call it, the conduit of a song, they're willing to reveal a lot to you. And, like, we don't know each other, but they feel some need to tell. Like it's Well, I, you know what, I, I think what you do is you open the door. You invite them in when you're telling these stories. Maybe. And you have a connection with, with your audience through your storytelling that I bet you is, it makes them feel safe to come to you. Maybe. I mean, I, I, honestly, I've never even thought about it this much. Like, it's just, it's, it's, okay, this it's, is what I do. <laughs> it's, this it's, is what the, in my head. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be in your head. <laughs> no, it's crazy. <laughs> well, Jeffrey, you know what? You are, you are doing so amazing, and I know you're gonna, we're going to stop, and you're going to actually play a song for us yeah. today. And it's brand new. It's yes. Brand new, debuting here today. Yes, yes. So tell us about the story. Okay, so the the song. Oh, the song, sorry. Yeah, the song, the song with the story. <laughs> the the story. song is called "Follow Your Heart," and the and the opening line um, says, "North Star Falling, Lose My Way." The name of my last album was "North Star Falling," and and, and, I, and I found as I was going and doing interviews with media, everyone was saying. Oh, generally, a question was, "What's up with the name of your album? It sounds so ominous." North Star Falling. And I said, "No, they, like, I think it's really optimistic, actually, because in, in in the olden days when people used the North Star to navigate." If it, let's pretend it fell, like stars do fall at yes, some point, like yes. let's burnt out, it fell. You just have to figure out a different way to guide yourself to get to where it is that you want to go. Like right. you wouldn't be like, well, that's that. <laughs> no up. more traveling. <laughs> like, you, you, you'd fi- I, I hope you wouldn't. You know. So the idea is like, um, you know, you'd, you'd be lost for a little while, but then you'd figure it out. And and the whole point of the song is, um, I think you ha- in life with with figuring out where it is that you belong. Because I think ultimately that's what we're doing. Our entire life, we're trying to figure out where do we fit. Exactly. How do we fit, right? That's it. Yep. You've got to get a little lost, and then you'll know. you got to get a little lost. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, we're going to listen now. Okay. No star falling, lose my way. The seeker seeks ignoring doubts Heed the promise setting now
Are you putting it on an album, or are you going to put it out as a single? What, what are you doing with it? Ah, here's the thing. Right now, I am writing towards my next um, record that I'm going to record in the fall and hopefully release in the spring. So this song is a contender for the this record. This is a contender. Yes. Well, I really like it. So. I really like it. I'm going to be playing it a okay. lot. Okay. Thank you so, so much. So, Jeffrey, where, you know, you're inspiring people out there with your songs. What's inspiring you? Hmm, that's a really good question. I mean, one of the things I love about what I get to do, which is, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm on the go a lot. A lot of people say, like I had someone lean into me the other day and say, a girl who knows me quite well, she said, how come you're not having a nervous breakdown? And I was like, what do you mean? She said, she said you're constantly on the go. And I said, right. I love it. Right. Like, I just love it. And part of that, I'm, I'm always somewhere new, is I'm meeting so many people. Mm -hmm. And just getting to meet so many people is like, I find it, there's inspiration in, in all these different, all these different stories of, the, of, of, of these people, people who host concerts, people who come to concerts, people who introduce themselves. Right. I find that incredibly inspiring. I mean, you get a snapshot of, of the diversity of folks out there. Like, I, I think it's right. great. If you sat in your living room all day, you could live a life. You'd be living. Uh, and I think if you have like, you'd be alive. I don't know if you'd be Better said, you'd be alive. I don't know if you'd be living. And, and I think if you had like, one friend, you know, you'd be experiencing life on a certain level. But I think because I get to meet so many people, I feel just so energized by yeah. it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I also find that people, the people that I meet um, with their stories they tell me or with insights they get from them, it's great fodder for a song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You're just out there gathering. Be careful. Okay. We have five questions for you. Okay. Ready? So what is your favorite inspirational quote and how has it influenced you in your life? Oh. Dear, my favorite inspirational quote. That's that's tricky. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, Can I play the Jeopardy music. I think you gotta play some. Play, it's like make make the Jeopardy noise. I'm terrible with these things. 
You know, I, I, I remember what it was. I, I can't remember the exact words of the quote, but it's like, um, it's like, dance like, dance like no one's watching. Yes. It, it, it's, it's, it's that one. And I, actually, the reason that popped into my mind is because it's on a big magnet on my fridge. And I think there was a time when I was like, uh, afraid of that, you know? Right. You, you, you were, we're kind of like, we're all kind of born like literally wild horses and then we're kind of tamed our entire yeah. life, right? Yeah. And, and then there's a point when I, I don't know when I realized it's, it's like, no, like get rid of Who those cares? reins, right? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. cares? So awesome. Let's go there. Okay. So can we dance later? Uh, we're, yes, yes. At, <laughs> on this table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not sure we'll be taping that. So what inspired you to get out of bed in the morning? Oh, that's a good question. Because I, 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 I do look forward to the next day. What inspires me? Um, possibility. Nice. Like, I think... I like there's certain things in a day that are planned, but it but it's it's the I the, the nature of what I do is like you have to have a plan to kind of guide the whole process along to, to, to be a musician and you know your your, right. your tour path whatever, but the reality of this work is fifty percent probably of what you do in a year you you don't know at the side of the year what it's going to be, and that excites me. That excites yeah. so the unknown the unknown of what could be yeah sweet, so what has been the most uh, surprising thing that you've chosen in your life? To, oh, shapers! It's the most surprising thing that I've chosen. Well, I mean, if you would have asked me when I was a teenager, would I be a full-time musician? I would have said that's impossible because everyone, everyone had told me all the way along that music will be a, music is a hobby. People pursue music as a hobby, right? Um, so I think the, the choosing it as a career path was surprising because it was terrifying. 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 You're going against everything you were ever told. Everyone, like, I was always told, like, well, that cannot be a career. Right. You know, being a dentist sure could be. That's what yes. I, was, I was meant to be a dentist. Uh, <laughs> luckily, I have great teeth. That works <laughs> but no, but so, yeah, choosing, choosing music. Like, it, it, it's, a, it's still a surprise. It's sometimes I'm like, how did this even happen? Like, it's, it's, it's strange. Nice. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, what is the greatest secret to creating the life you have? Oh. <laughs> Lots of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. It's not. Um, what would it be? The greatest secret, the greatest secret. I think, honestly, it's probably, like, the thing that people don't realize is it's a thick skin. Um, you, I don't, I don't think this is just, just music. Anybody who chooses to do something a little bit different, off the beaten path, if you choose to take the route somewhere off of Main Street, um, there are constant... There's, there's, there's constant critics, and the observers love to suggest better ways to do it. Because, because for, it, right. there, there's all these people who, and I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, you know, I, I ended up being a musician. It's, it's not that at all. But there's all these people who I think, would, 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 not just being a musician, but pick independent, independent path, whatever independent path. There's all these people who want to do it, but can't. And but what they love to do is comment on it. Yes. And and, and give advice. Right. And uh, so as a result, you have to kind of develop a Teflon yeah. bit to yourself yeah. and a thick skin, and just be willing, be ready and willing to ping it off you. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. So, what name other than one you were known as would you like to be called by? Oh God. <laughs> uh, how about um, my middle name is. Mike, Mike, Michael. So, what if we picked Magical Mystical Michael? Magical Mystical Michael. Oh boy, that's good. Well, that fits because today's show is all about magic. With that's music, why I went right? there. Yeah, yeah good. Exactly. You're, you're smart. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, where can people get in touch with you? Where can they find all your brilliance? Well, um, best place is my website. So okay. on, online, if people are going online, www.jeffstraker.com. Okay. Uh, I'm an avid Facebooker, so my Facebook music page is Jeffrey, with an E-R-Y, dot Straker, dot music. Awesome. We, will have, it. we yeah. will have it on this. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, those places. Please come back again. Please have me back. I will. Absolutely. Please give me some of that vodka. <laughs> right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. If you're someone who has this calling in your heart... If there's something that's whispering to you, listen to it. Don't get to the end of your road and wish you had. Choose it. Even if it only ends up being something that you enjoy doing once in a while, choose it. You deserve to be happy. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next week where I'll have another inspiring guest who's creating greater in the world. Bye for now.